Troy, I, I've got some cool stuff here. I've got this giant <laughs> tool. I can show you what it does if you want to see. I know you know, but, you know, it's up to yeah, you. Yeah, let's jump. Yeah, let's jump into it, man. Tell, tell them all about it. All right, cool. Well, now we're bringing out the, the big tools. Again, back to the professional tool mantra here. I've got my RP340 and my Mega Press Press Booster. Okay, what this is going to do is it's going to double the force necessary to, to do the work that is going to be required to press this fitting. Okay, this is a two and a half inch carbon steel IPS fitting. Okay, so we're talking pipe. So Pipe requires a lot of force to press. One thing to understand about the tooling platforms, especially when we talk about carbon steel, the compact tools generate uh, 24 kilonewtons, roughly 5,400 PSI. So one question we get a lot is, how do I know the tool's making enough force to, to press the fitting? I got a complete press. If the tool cycles completely, it made enough force because every time you squeeze the trigger of the press tool, it's gonna generate that much force. So on a compact tool, 5,400 PSI or 24 KN. And when we get into the standard size tools, it's about 7,200 PSI or 32 kilonewtons. Well, this fitting takes more force than that to press. So we have to amplify that force. And we're gonna do that by double, doubling the travel required to make the work happen. And that's what the press booster does. It extends the travel of the rigid RP 340 tooling platform. So the booster, we got a question about, will this fit on my Milwaukee tool? This booster will fit on an RP330 or an RP340. That's it, okay? And either of those corded or battery, of course, there's a, a cord adapter for the 340, uh, but the 330, you could get it corded or battery powered. And so that is the tooling platform and it uses a ring. And I've got a ring kind of hanging off the pipe here and this is, your two and a half inch mega press ring. And this ring was used on this job. It's tired, it's dirty, it's, it's fine. It's ready for action. And mark my insertion depth on this piece of pipe. It's not a perfectly square cut. Someone cut that with a bandsaw. I cut this side with my rigid 614 dry cut saw with carbide teeth. Cuts beautifully like butter through steel pipe. Uh, P1000 strut, stainless steel pipe copper tube, PVC, anything you're out on the job site with, rebar goes right through it, all thread. Oh my gosh, how much all thread do you cut in a day? So really cool tool to have, and that's a rigid 614 dry cut saw. But you can cut it with a bandsaw too. It's cut with a Milwaukee bandsaw, perfectly fine. Mark my insertion depth, we've already prepped this. So I'm just gonna go ahead and make the press, and the ring is gonna go over the fitting hub, make sure it's locked securely in place. And then this is a double press process. So this tool can be a little heavy, so I do recommend the strap. And what I'm gonna do is just lock it onto the ring and I'm gonna squeeze the trigger. And I'm stuck here, I'm going nowhere, okay? The reason for that is, is I've only completed part of the press, all right? I still have the swivel ability. Of course, now I'm locked on, so it's a little harder to swivel, but I would have had my positioning if I needed to swivel before I made the press. Okay, I've got to squeeze the trigger a second time. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Okay, and waiting for the ram to reset. One more trigger pull and I can open my jaws again. And I have a completely pressed system ready to go. I can pressure test this guy up to 200 PSI with air or 600 PSI hydrostatic, ready to go. Not going anywhere.